Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack It Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, everybody. It's Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow back for an early evening edition of Mavs Moneyball After Dark. We are recording on Sunday, November 22nd. You guys last heard from us early, early Saturday morning uh, as we were recording after kind of a quiet start to free agency. And then mid-free agency, uh, news broke that the Mavericks uh, were were involved in a three-team trade. And at the time, we were kind of analyzing all the different moving parts and it ended up being the sort of thing where we found out probably like, I don't know, 45 minutes after we logged off that the pieces that were moving were DeLon Wright went to the Pistons. Uh, Justin Jackson went to Oklahoma City. Uh, James Johnson came to Dallas. And who was the last piece? The other guy that we thought. Um, Ariza. Yeah, Trevor Ariza ends up in Oklahoma City. And overall, net win, Mavericks move off their two worst, uh, their two worst uh, contracts and pieces, yes. and they bring in a guy in James Johnson who is—I don't know how much he's going to play, but he—he—he—he's definitely a tough guy. That's for certain. He's an expiring contract as well, and you know that's that's where that trade left off. Um, what else has happened, Josh? Uh, so after that, the, the move, the, I guess only one thing has happened. Since two, two that. things. Two things. Oh yeah. Two things. Uh, the Mavericks signed Wes, I can, is it Wes Wundu, uh, from the Orlando Magic, one of their backup wings. He is a 25 year old, kind of a raw project wing. Uh, if you want to think about it, think of it like a less pedigree Al Farouk Aminu when the Mavericks got him on a very cheap one year deal. Same kind of thing where you don't really know what he's going to turn into, but you just love the raw potential that he could potentially bring. Uh, Raw potential potentially bring. That's one of the stupidest things I've said in the last couple of days. Um, So they did that. Uh, I believe that has been reported by Zach Lowe as a veteran's minimum. Mm -hmm. That's about it. We haven't really heard if there's any, you know, we assume it would be a one year considering what the Mavericks are, are obviously planning one year, but we don't know that official. Um, and then the other move that we can, you know, is concrete is, Hey, uh, Willie Colley Stein is back for two years, a little over 8 million. And that came after Shams from the athletics said that Mark Saul had expressed interest with the Mavericks, uh, at the start of free agency. And that's kind of who the Mavericks were planning to use their uh, mid-level exception on. And then what do you know? The Los Angeles Lakers say, Hey, do you want to play for a title the, the the reigning champions, we will move a contract to bring you in. And Marcus All told the Mavericks to eat dirt, or he probably told them thank you for the leverage and then <laughs> sign he's gonna sign with the Lakers. And so the Mavericks had to scramble to sign a big because they clearly need five big men under contract for this upcoming season. Uh sorry, I'm getting really snarky now. But they bring back Willie Colley Stein. Uh perplexingly, he gets more, it's a bigger contract. Uh this, he'll be paid more money this upcoming season than the Mavericks paid for him last year. And I'm not really sure what he did last year to earn more money, but that's okay. Because honestly, they could have signed a ghost to that contract. I'm just glad that they used uh, some money and got another contract that they can use purely from a trade perspective. Uh, I really don't care what Willie Colley Stein does or doesn't do. Uh, I'm just glad they used the money in some some way, even if we're going to uh, be a little cranky about it, but yeah, about- yeah. I, I've I'd actually spent the early part of my afternoon uh, going back and forth with people talking about how the Mavericks need to use these things at their disposal, and 
sometimes over the last 10 years or so, it's become very odd within sports where you have fans that really defend when an owner doesn't spend money. And I, I was getting a lot of that where I don't particularly care. I, if the Mavericks have the option to sign a contract to someone who can then be of value to them, that's what I want them to do. So I'm really glad that they actually use the money. I am very disappointed that they used it in Willie Cauley Stein. Uh, who are they bidding against? No one. Um, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> you know, it, there is not a big man market unless you're going to be a member of the Detroit Pistons. Like big men do not get contracts, let alone 27 year old journeyman big men who got, you know, who got moved to Golden State and then Golden State basically agreed to a buyout with him. Then he came to Mavericks and he played some lackluster games. And then due to a, a personal situation with him, he decided to not play in Orlando. He just hasn't done anything other than be a huge human being. Uh, I saw his real, you know, we made fun of his ridiculous videos all summer because they're ridiculous. If he does anything of those things in, in a game where Carl is not going to play him um if you watched any of those so the 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 bottom line is when it when it kind of comes down to to what they did in free agency purely free agency they brought back uh willie collie stein they signed uh wes Sawandu, and they brought back um trey burke and that's that's what they did so two of those two of those guys were uh buyout market castaways uh, that the Mavericks picked up. And then the third is a project player from a team who, a guy that didn't really seem to to fit. Now, that could work. All three could work. But <sighs> compared to how we were feeling heading into free agency proper, it's a little bit of a letdown. I, 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 I just, I'm a little, I'm a little let down and I'm a little, concerns not right. Because I think, I think we need to make a really key distinction here that the Maverick, off season was great good to great i think maverick free agency so far has been very lackluster is that fair or is that too much no that's fair because they i mean let's be real josh richardson's probably a better player like if you told us uh, a week ago uh the best player the mavericks are gonna acquire in the off season is josh richardson me and you go okay cool pretty Thank excited yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh maybe the timing you know if if Josh Richardson was a free agent signing, like with the MLE and not a uh, draft 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 day trade, maybe we feel a little bit different. But uh, you know, they they won the off season before free agency even start. You, you know, they had a good off season before the free agency even started yep. because they acquired three prospects who are all three of them are legitimate. You know, they didn't get like one guy and two guys that are, that they just got the got to get or to you know, all three of them are legitimate. Uh, NBA prospects, uh, two of them should have will be making cases to play uh, right away, and then they got a wing a wing starter, you know, a six six five six six wing starter that can shoot and handle the ball a little bit and defend, which is exactly what they needed. So, uh, and then they got rid of their two worst rotation players, and even if James Johnson can't play, uh, and I was looking into the numbers the other night, and I think he might be able to play. Uh, if he closed out the the season with Minnesota very very strongly, and I know that that stretch of games in late February, early March is like doldrum NBA basketball when a lot of teams just don't really care anymore, and they're either trying to get to the end of the season or they're just trying to get to the playoffs healthy. Uh, but regardless, he still he played 24 minutes a game in 14 games and had some really good numbers. Uh, so maybe he still has something left, which would be huge. Uh, yeah. So yeah, like, that's fine. It's just. It, Kirk, for me, it's the process. That's what that's what's very frustrating about it. I was not expecting the Mavericks to use the MLE to get some cra- – like, I'm not mad the Mavericks didn't sign Danilo Gallinari. I'm not mad the Mavericks didn't sign Jeremy Grant. Like, I knew that wasn't going to happen. Like, the Mavericks only had the mid-level exception. It's a little over $9 million. They were, right. At most, they were going to get a competent veteran uh, role player. Uh, and they didn't – you know, they brought back their own guys. They didn't really do that. Um so that's that's just kind of the thing, and it's the process. Like when, when Shams tweets that Mark, you know, Marcus All showed heavy interest in the Mavericks, and then you know he's not on the Mavericks. It's just I'm like, how hard, you know, when are the Mavericks gonna talk to a free agent, and that free agent be like, you know, I'm really interested in signing, and the Mavericks go, okay, we'll sign. And when that, when are they gonna be like when a free agent goes, ah, well, you know, I'm still looking at this and that. When are the Mavericks gonna be like, all right, well, 
sorry, we're, we're moving on. We're, we're going to do something else. Uh, and maybe they did, you know, I don't know if they did that or not. Uh, but the fact that they waited till now to sign Willie Colley Stein indicates to me that they were holding out until Gasol made that decision to them today. It's just kind of like, man, just, just do your thing. Go get guys that want to be here. Yep. And if you don't want to be here, move on to the next guy. Well, so I don't report stuff, but I, I was told from a person who knows some things that the Mavericks may have had some problems getting getting guys to accept their money um, in the sense of maybe they were pitching too high uh, for their for, for where they were. Um, I also, you know, when you look at some of the other contracts that were handed out, the Mavericks are just outside the range of a few of them. Yeah. Um, and, and that, you know, just that, that makes things difficult. But I don't know. I just find it frustrating also because the the people who feed leaks to Mavericks, you know, the Mavericks reporters that exist out in the realm often get told some things and then they pass them on to us through a filter. And I buy the horse shit every fucking time. And it's my fault. Yeah. I'm just, I'm tired of the pitch. I'm, I, I hope you can't hear my kids screaming upstairs. I can, but it's okay. Cause it actually fits into what you're going with. Right yeah. Now. He's mad. He's laughing about something. Um, it's, it's actually a, a positive noise, but it's um, very funny in the sense that, that I, I, I just, I do it every time because I'm a fan like the rest of you guys. And I just don't know why it's this difficult, um, to, to come out and say, well, you know, I'm pretty sure it was Rick Carlisle who said after draft night, we ain't done. And you know, in, in, in the literal interpretation, they weren't done because they had to add players to what they were doing. But in the marketing approach, when you come out and say something like that, what do you expect fans to do other than latch on to the big fish idea? Does that make sense? Yeah, because that makes I- sense. Uh, it, to me, though, like I just you, you're the one who said you're saying like, I need to stop. But like I when I heard that, I was like, no, like in my head, I'm like, there's, I'm looking, they're not going to do it. Like, I know what's going to happen. I see, like, we have 10 years of history to say that they're just not, they just cannot figure out the free agency thing. So I was like, maybe there's going to be a big trade, but I, I just, I don't believe the stuff that I hear when the Mavericks pump, pump, the, pump up their off seasons. Like I've just gotten over that. Like I trying to deal in the reality of the situation and they had the nine, nine and a half or whatever mid-level exception and that's it. And I was like, okay, just get a guy. Just use that money to get a guy so that you can well, trade I'm him or something. I'm about their cap situation right now. I really am curious about what – what because when you send out Justin Jackson's $5 million and DeLon Wright's $9 million, you, you 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 clear $14 million off the books. And Well, James Johnson came back $16 million. Okay, Jam. Wow, he's sixteen. Okay, well, that's <laughs> yeah. that's a big. Shoot. So that Good. yeah. So they Good still they're still kept out. I think I knew this because uh, Coop Senior was talking about how potentially the Mavericks could have 50, 54 million in cap room <laughs> if uh, if. Um, Richardson were to opt out for some reason, and he might next year. He's a good basketball player, and this is this. I don't know. This is. I'm just. I don't know if I'm more frustrated with myself. Um, I'm tired of the pitches. Uh, that sort of thing is is just kind of got me. I'm I'm in my own head now, worried about what comes next. Because let's be clear here: the Mavericks are making a super pitch for Giannis. Should he not sign the supermax? They this went from being a thing that we were joking about to where they have positioned themselves pretty well. I might add to be able to make a solid to very good offer as much as one can when trading for a, another superstar, the Mavericks are, are, are there. They have this, the pieces. There's no ifs, ands or buts about it. But the problem becomes is if he signs the supermax, the Mavericks are then going to be in play for a bunch of guys who I really don't think are worth anything close to the max money dollars. They're going to be out there getting. I mean, one friend of the podcast was like, well, LaMarcus Aldridge might be. And it's like, I don't want LaMarcus Aldridge. On the Mavericks? Get out of here. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of frustrated at the moment because looking ahead, it, it feels like they built towards a certain course and they left the draft and they left the first night of free agency where I was feeling really good about where they're going. And I still feel very good about where they're going, but the Mavericks operate at their best within the trade realm. They just don't operate off of free agency very well. And I don't like the cap room. Yeah, I I don't disagree with you. Uh, I mean, you had Luca coming off an All NBA first team year, 
leading a team to the playoffs. Um, and they still, you talk about how you heard that they can't get guys to take their money. And it's like, if they can't get guys to take their money, then creating a bunch of cap room does not seem like the most efficient way to uh, make roster moves. So that worries me. Um, but the thing that I'm holding out hope on right now is I honestly hope that Giannis signs his Supermax in December because that takes him off the table and that hopefully would force the Mavericks into thinking, all right, plan, let's start. They have to think plan B now right. instead of thinking plan B in July or August of next year, uh, which I would much rather them do. And then they like, they've got so many expiring contracts and now that they've got a lot of different contracts at different lengths, you know, they don't just have a bunch of, guys tied up into big money they got like a lot of guys on smaller deals medium deals uh and really chris Stops is the only guy on a big deal so uh and i guess tim hardaway jr but he is uh just one year they could make some noise at the trade deadline if something happens they've got the the pieces at least in terms of contracts you know they probably don't have the draft capital to do it right but that's i mean we can't really there's nothing to do about that but there's part of me that's like hey if Giannis opts in i'm hoping that it's like all right screw it let's start you know hopefully that facade that dream of keeping as much cap space open in 2021 dies a little bit and they're able to be a bit more flexible in how they want to go about building the roster because i don't know we've had we've had 10 years i don't everyone's like wait till next year yeah and i can't I can't buy into them making a significant free agency acquisition. Uh, nope. they, they just don't do it. Uh, they don't do it. They failed on the pitch. And and yeah. for people that don't remember what we're talking about, they brought in some superstars for that plan powder nonsense and pitched them with comic book cartoons. Some of the things they've done in free agency over the years, some of their pitches that have leaked out are awful. And I don't know why, because they have built an incredible culture for team-based stuff, for basketball itself. Don't, don't worry about Cuban. Don't worry about some of the weird things that happen peripherally. You know, Rick Carlisle is an unbelievable basketball coach who has a track record of success. Donnie Nelson has shown himself to be a very solid general manager when, you know, given the opportunity to utilize the tools at his at his disposal. But for some reason, free agency just isn't connecting. And free agency is usually a organization-wide pitch. There's lots of things happening. They talk to players. They bring them in. This was, you know, they, they've had to have been talking to some guys for a while. But the Mavericks are just always, always second, you know, second best in a lot of these things. I heard that they, you know, they were in contention for Crowder, but they couldn't afford him. So you, you kind of, you don't, you know, you kind of move away from these sorts of things. So it's just, it's a little, it's just the free agency part is a little bit much. I, I, I don't know what. I, I hope that that this kind of, I, I, I'm feeling it works itself out. Again, you know, Donnie Nelson keeps pulling rabbits out of a hat when it's a very, you know, straightforward situation in terms of, you know, trades between teams as opposed to, you know, having to play the field when you're when you're looking for free agents. Um, so I, I don't know. It's it's just kind of been kind of a frustrating afternoon for me. Um, I, I do want to make this clear point, though. If we split up, you know, what has occurred into various um, kinds of, of offseason ac uh, acquisitions, I would give their draft an A. I would give their trade situation and what they did in that regard an A, and I would give their their free agency situation a D. Uh, I took a lot of heat online for that today, but again, I'm just I'm not super psyched about bringing in two guys who were not on basketball teams, you know, at, at certain points last year. Like that, that's not. It's just not going to move things for me doesn't mean that they 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 might not work out. I mean Rick Carlisle is really good in these sorts of situations, but I'm just overall that aspect of it I'm I'm just a little bit frustrated, which is to say when you combine all three of those elements together, the Mavericks had a net positive offseason where I feel they are now they should reasonably be a top 5 team in the West. Oh, undoubtedly. You know, I think Rich the Richardson move I don't think I could stress enough is a perfect ideal type of move for them and yeah. being able to like being able to say hey dorian finney smith is not your best perimeter defender all the time is just a huge that's they need that desperately and the fact that he can shoot he's shown a little playmaking chops like that's 
when we watched them in the playoffs, like that's what we watched. We they needed and they just needed more guys that could stay on the floor in high leverage situations. Um, especially with the way Justin Jackson turned out and the way Delon Wright turned out. Like I don't think people we don't talk enough about how you know before the season last season started they were counting on those guys to matter and the, and by the end of the season those two guys didn't matter and when two yep. of those guys don't matter uh, you know you kind of have to scramble and they scramble well you know they get Trey Burke but we'll see, you know I'm just so happy you know Richardson and Josh Green and Tyrell Terry all three of those guys you know have theoretically can help push this team up a rung in in tiers in terms of contention and I'm very excited about that uh but, you know, I just can't you, – if you just told – you know, free agency was Wes Wundu, Trey Burke, and, and Willie Cauley-Stein, I just can't – I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, that's okay. Yeah. I'm not – it's not doom and gloom. But, like, you know, I'm I'm not buying into the Willie Cauley-Stein renaissance. I mean, he played – There the is funny, no renaissance. He's yeah. never been good. The funny thing about, like, buying into Willie Cauley-Stein turning a corner is, like, he was on the team last year. And he didn't really play like he, you know, like I'm he had one his, really good game in Charlotte. That was yeah. All. And I'm looking at his game log, and he got hurt, so he missed a couple games. But like the last four games he played, he, the most minutes he played in any one of those games was 15 minutes. Like he's not like the Mavericks got to look at him, and he is not someone that they're going to rely on to be a huge minute getter. He's basically just here because. Kristaps is hurt. Like if Kristaps was not doing knee surgery and he was fine, I don't think Willie Collins Stein's on the roster right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when when Pris, when Przing, like Kirk when Przingis is healthy, is Willie Collins Stein going to play like regularly? Uh, the only no. way is if Pal is cook, cooked, right? Like if Pal no. just can't come back, he doesn't play way. hard enough. The guy has never yeah. shown the ability to play hard. And yeah. Dwight Powell drives you know me nuts. You've come, you've really come around on him. But Maxie and Dwight Powell play hard. That is how you get backup minutes in the NBA. And Willie Colley Stein has shown has never shown the ability to play hard. He is an athletic super freak. I mean, that's the the, the argument for Willie Colley Stein is have you seen him? Because the guy, like the dude looks incredible. Like there are not he he, he gives me like like buffer Tyson Chandler vibes when I take a look at him, but it, it's he just has never shown the ability to do like to bring the heat consistently. He wants to be a different player than he actually is. And maybe, you know, he'll roll to the rim hard, which is what every, you know, I I, I love I love our social media friends who are like, oh, I just got to roll to the rim hard. Rim rolling is hard, people. I, I, it's, it's a skill and it's something that you have to practice and get good at and involves timing. It involves, you know, it, and, and, you know, it, it's something I don't remember seeing him do a, to- a terrible amount. Like maybe the numbers are better than I recall. So, but again, you know, it's, it's, there's something there. They're, they're, they're going to try. They're going to have an option. Like he's going to have an opportunity. That's the other thing is at least, you know, we're going to kind of know relatively quickly whether this is something that we should actually be mad about because, <laughs> you know, training camp, by the time you guys hear this tomorrow, training camp is in eight days. Basketball uh, preseason oh starts. Like, <laughs> That's so <laughs> soon. Preseason starts on December 11th. We're going to know in a hurry. This is not going to be this normal theoretical argument where I, where I, you know, bitch and moan all summer about, <laughs> oh, what's going to happen? Like, we're going to see this in a hurry. We're going to see angry Rick Carlisle face. Um, I, I, this is, I'm a little bit like, like now I'm talking about it. Like, I'm kind of a little bit excited because there's no, there's just not going to be the discussion. There's going to be, you know, uh, uh, actual things to talk about soon. And we're going to know whether this was good or bad. And, you know, maybe it won't matter because when you got Luka Doncic, a lot doesn't matter. Um, is these things tend to kind of take care of themselves in a very real way. So uh, I, I guess we'll see. I mean, there's 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 some stuff that I would, you know, would like to, to come back to in a couple of days when we let this process, when we let some things uh, settle and we can kind of map out what the potential um depth chart looks like and when we know a little bit more about some of the contractual situations yeah because they they need to cut someone don't they yeah <laughs> there, there's the the elephant in the room and brad townsend of of dallas morning news has repeatedly said that he believes that jj beret is coming back i haven't mentioned jj maybe more than once because i just can't believe dallas would do that um i don't care about veteran presence and culture the Los Angeles Lakers who are competing for a title don't have the culture player on the team to make everyone feel good. I mean, I guess there's Jared Dudley, maybe, but it's not like he's there for the Laker culture. He's there because he's old and he wants a ring and can still hit a three-point shot. J.J. Barea shouldn't play anymore. 
He is an unbelievable liability, even if he can still do some things relatively well. It's not, I, I heard all before last season, JJ's not going to play Kirk. You don't need to be so upset about this. And they were right until they weren't because the NBA season is long. And in a 72 game compacted crunch, the Mavericks are going to need almost everyone on their roster at one point or another. And the thought of relying on J.J. Barea in a contested Western Conference race, it's not fair to him. It's not fair to his teammates. If they want him around for, for what he brings, sign him as a coach. If he still thinks he can play, let him go over to Europe for a year and bring him back next year. J.J. is always going to be part of the Mavericks organization. Like, we know this. I'm not hating on J.J. Gosh, the guy's fun. He, he's done a lot. But it's just at a certain point it becomes reset uh, resource allocation. And if you're going to underwhelm me with this sort of free agency – Adding in JJ on top and then telling me why I should like it, I, I, I'm not here for it. It is not something I'm particularly interested in. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. If he's the literal, the last guy on the roster, that's where I'm like, okay, you know, and Brunson hopefully is healthy. Uh, and then you've got Terry. Um, so they have enough in front of him that he shouldn't play. But like you said, you know, if Brunson gets hurt and Rick doesn't trust Terry, then he's probably going to play and you got you have burke which is big insurance to make sure that berea doesn't play um but yeah i just i can't get mad about the berea thing uh i don't even know and i can't but what's stupid is i can't even like fight you like i'm not trying to like disagree with what you're saying because what you're saying is right it's just one of those things where i just don't have the the stomach in me to fight it because it's just like i don't know um they got they have they have Burke. If they didn't bring back Burke, then the Berea thing would be very, very, very scary. Uh but like I'm wondering, like, how many guys do they have on the roster? Like six they gotta cut like a guy. I there's a part of me that's like, is Wes Suundu even gonna sign that contract? Are they gonna come up to him and be like, Hey man, uh you're kind of ran out of space here and we got these guys like something's going to have to give and that's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, well, it might've been Townsend who said like training camp, uh, he got from a source that like training camp is going to be interesting where it's like, well, yeah, we only got like a week. So what? <laughs> like, yeah. like, well, who, how do you make a deterrent? Like, this is very, it's very challenging. It's, it's, there's, there's, there's things still going on and I'm sure, you know, knowing our luck, there's still probably going to be a free agency decision or, or transaction or something that occurs between now and what's happening. You know, and we, you know, we, we like having these sorts of things to talk about. So I I, I do want to to at least, you know, understand that th this might not be done, but it feels done. And we're going to have enough to dis discuss in the next several days because, I, you know, in, in a different year, two years from now, I'm going to be worried primarily about the top 10 uh, on the roster. Uh, the back five aren't necessarily a thing, but with what the, the, the Mavericks are going to have to do this year, I'm really, really focused and, and interested uh, rather in what they do with these positions. And you already got a guy like Boban who is, you know, very situational at best, but key, I think he's important to team culture. You can't have two culture slots. That's just, that's not a thing. It, it can't be a thing this year that there's too much at play and the Mavericks have too many guys Three, you know, if you include Powell, Porzingis, and Luca, we all know all three of them are going to miss uh, time due to like you know just rest. So you want to have people who know how to play basketball. Yeah, I agree. Well, we should probably get off the horn. I'm sure people don't really want to hear me being a grouch because you know the last two pods have been pretty exciting. We have uh, had a lot more support in these last ones just because people are interested in what's going on. I think you and I will probably come back in a couple of days, midweek, just to at least check in and see what's going on. Um, are you? Uh, do you have anything in mind that you're going to uh, to be writing? Uh, probably going to take a breath and just kind of write about the summary because, I mean, for all we know, the off season's over. Uh, in terms of like, there's going to be some smaller moves. You know, they have to figure out the roster situation. But in terms of acquisitions. Unless a trade come down comes down from heaven, like this, these are the guys that are going to go into next season with. Uh, I do not yep. expect anything to move. So now that we kind of know, I, I'll probably write up like an off season wrap up, kind of hinting at some of the things we're talking about here and try to make sense of it all and and, and see what happens. Yeah, I know. Uh, at some point, I'm assuming tomorrow. I haven't talked to him yet, but uh, 
But our new guy, uh, Luke, uh, actually got an interview with Nate Hinton, who is one of the undrafted free agents. I can't remember what kind of uh, roster, uh, what kind of contract he signed on, but he is a guy who, uh, you know, Brian Trader, who was on the podcast, our, our draft kind of go-to guy, uh, said is, is one of his favorite players of any draft from the recent years. Uh, he is his rebounding numbers in college will make you laugh out loud. If you go look at them, Josh, he, he might be, the, he might've <laughs> yeah. been the best rebounder in college. Uh, he is a below the rim, like kind of power guard, uh, but he's big and he might, he, he kind of has wing size and he's just another dude. And, and uh, Luke said the interview was outstanding, some really great quotes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to running that this week and we'll probably have a few more things. Once uh, things get, get settled down here. I, I, our, our team is, as just crushed it the last week and i couldn't be prouder of our staff um Mm -hmm. you know we've waited a long time to cover a good team uh a lot of us on the roster so uh, times like these are when we really crank out some some interesting work and fun work just because you know this is what we do this for is 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 to talk about the you you know i'm a little grouchy during specific aspects of stuff but like this is fun. This is why we do this. So I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm really, I'm, I'm looking forward to the season. I'm not looking forward yeah. to the day to day grind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's going to be really tough. Um, so. could I, could I quite, could I ask you, like, I know you want to get out of here, but I'm sure. curious about your take on something. Of course. Um, what do you think? Like, we didn't really talk about this, but like they were interested in Marcus all. What do you, what do you think about that? I'm trying to think about like that some more, like, I don't know. That feels like some agency favors. That feels like that, that was not a thing. And, and, and the first time we heard about it was the time it closed up, which was interesting. Uh, shout out to Shams for not knowing how the word finalist works, because he, he said that they're the finalist between uh, the Toronto Raptors, LA Lakers and Dallas Mavericks. And it's like, well, then are we like semi-finalists? Because, you know, finalists kind of imply two people. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I hadn't heard anything from it. I, I, I almost feel like it's like agency favors. I, I, I have a hard time believing the Mavericks were ever, ever involved there, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's just, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, okay, let's say they did bring in Marcus Saul. Like I'm just, the fit there is interesting. Cause he's just, you know, he's on the tail end of his career. Um, he doesn't really, you know, he could shoot obviously, and he's still, you know, a quality defender. It's just like, when Kristaps, I, I try to think of this like when Kristaps is healthy, what does it look like? And I don't know if you'd start Kristaps and Gasol together, because um, I keep getting people telling me that like they're going to have they're going to start two bigs for most of the year. Maybe they will because they don't want Kristaps to have that wear and tear. But in my mind, the future is Kristaps as the five full time uh, with like Dorian at the four, and so Gasol bringing in like a big like Gasol who's not going to be. You know, he's not going to come to a team to be cool coming off the bench uh, to get to the second round. So, uh, I don't know. That's, yeah. just, that's just interesting. That feels like, I don't know. I, it's hard for me because I'm biased because I didn't think they needed to sign any bigs this offseason. Uh, I'm on the extreme end of that. So, I don't know. I just thought that was, I never really considered his name before. And to see it just pop up out of nowhere, I was like, hmm. Just yeah, about it that way. I don't know. I, I, the, the, the KP discussion. I think they're going to be it, treat him very similarly to Anthony Davis, where they might be best with him at the five, but I don't think they want the wear on him at the five. Yeah, I um, think you're right. So if that means twenty four minutes at the five and ten at the four, then they work that out. So I, I'm, I'm, um, really. I don't know. You're right, though. It, it is something. I hadn't really given it much consideration. Um, but that's, you know, this is, we should maybe see what comes out in the coming days, because I'm sure, you know, Tim McMahon and then the people who, who are actually, you know, the, the, the Brad Townsend's, the plugged in people of the world will have more to say. So yep. that might be something for us to talk about in a couple of days. OK. All right, guys, this has been Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow. Do you do us all a favor? Please go rate and review. Um, nobody does that. And it's really, really helpful for us. So. As always, uh, we appreciate your support, and we will talk to you later in the week. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. 
And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.